So in the world of video cards, we're seeing them come out with insane amounts of video RAM. But the question is, how much do you need for gaming in 2015? <laughs> Supermod here back in that video and we currently have cards that go up to an insane amount of 12 gigabytes of VRAM from the guys over at AMD. But with that much of RAM coming out and also to other cards from both AMD and Nvidia coming out with an crazy amount of RAM, I guess the question does fall down to, other than being a cool number on the spec sheet, what exactly can it do to help our gaming performance? And I guess we better first cover the specs of the system that we use to generate our conclusion for this video which we'll get to later on in the video. We kick things off with an Intel Core i7, 5820K overclocked to 4 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes of crucial 2133 MHz RAM, a GeForce GTX 980 reference card, and a gigabyte X99 UD3 motherboard, and also to some SSDs and uh, hard drives for our other things we were using. Now that we know what is in our system to help me draw this conclusion, I guess the next question is, what exactly is VRAM used for? So we can actually understand how it will help in our gaming performance as well as other computing tasks. On a basic level, VRAM is just basically used just like system RAM to go ahead and hold important information used by the video card in a fairly close and fast proximity. This can include things like textures in games as well as other things like lighting information and texturing and even shadow maps to go ahead and help you have a fairly nice gaming experience. Now the reason why we don't use SSDs or hard drives or even just system RAM is because they're just simply not fast enough. Even the newer faster DDR4 spec of RAM found on our particular system here today isn't even fast fast enough to compete with GDDR5 that we find on the graphics side as well as even things like HBM memory from AMD. So okay then, cool story, but uh, how exactly does having more or less actually help with my computer? Well to start off with, we'll talk about the actual frame buffer that is needed to go ahead and well run the frames on your computer. Every time the GPU spits out a frame, it not only sends it out to the monitor, but also to saves it into the VRAM for a couple seconds in case some things go a bit weird or it wants to do some extra little background processing on the actual image so we can go ahead and make a better overall gaming experience. Now if we render each frame at 32-bit color depth, which is basically a standard these days unless you're using something weird that goes to 16 or 64-bit or something like that, so we'll just make the assumption you're running at 32-bit color, we times that by 1920 by 1080 and boom we have 8.3 megabytes which is equal to one frame in 1080p. For a fun fact, if you go up to 4K that's 33 megabytes per frame and depending on the monitor it'll either be 30 FPS or 30 frames or it'll be 60, 120 or so on and so forth depending on what monitor you have. So every frame will take up a bit of space on that particular video card. On top of that we have things like anti-aliasing that can definitely drastically affect the amount of RAM that is being used on your system. The basic idea of anti-aliasing is to go ahead and render more pixels meaning it will need more space in that frame buffer to go ahead and give you a smoother overall image as it smooths out that little jaggedy line kind of effect that you find on many games. But okay, okay. So so how does this affect my gaming and will I see a noticeable increase in performance if I increase the amount of RAM on my video card that I select to buy and go ahead and put in my system? And the answer to that is pretty simple. It depends, so I guess it's not really simple at this stage. It depends on what you're running and what games you'll be doing and what settings you'll be running them on. For example, if you're just in Windows playing some Minesweeper or web browsing and those types of office works, having a 12 gigabyte Titan X is completely overkill as you're not even going to be doing that much and Windows itself is not really that taxing on the GPU. While someone else playing Skyrim with a thousand billion mods will definitely be benefiting from more VRAM as they can store more of their game actually inside the particular video card they're using using so they can get a better experience. This is also to the same on the more pro app side such as using After Effects or Autodesk Maya or any of the other Autodesk programs you'll be able to store your critical data information in there in terms of your model design or animation sequence in the actual video RAM for more accelerated playback giving you a better overall experience. But that's also to not the full story as we haven't exactly shown one chart yet because it's extremely hard to quantify how much of a benefit you'll be getting as having more VRAM. Now, the reason for that is the GPU that is paired up with the actual RAM. Unlike normal system RAM, there's no slots on the video card to go ahead and put in more RAM or take out the RAM. So it's not like I can really go ahead and add RAM to a system or decrease the amount of RAM that the video card is using as well. It's kind of impossible. There's also too no 
real software tools that I can go ahead and use to kind of even mimic what we would find on a card that has the same GPU but less actual RAM. So there's not exactly that much I can do. Now on top of that we won't find something like a 12 gigabyte GeForce GTX 950 and a 12 gigabyte Titan X with the same type of RAM because well they're two different cards. One's a really low end one and also two ones are high end ones so we're not really going to see that much of a difference. Also two lower end cards like the aforementioned 950 is going to be paired up with less RAM than a super high end video card like the Titan X because well Nvidia and AMD and just about every other manufacturer out there spend millions and millions of dollars on researching and developing the best amount of VRAM for their particular card to give the best experience. As the newer generation of video cards are coming out with support for 4 and even 8K resolutions we need the same amount of video RAM to go ahead and back up those large displays because well we do need to store that frame buffer as well as extra information on top of that. But if you're in the market for a brand new video card I guess we can come down to this. Don't get strung up over the amount of VRAM on your system more look at the core that is attached to the VRAM that will give you a best experience. As manufacturers spend a lot of time and money testing out different RAM configurations so you can kind of expect to get the best experience out of the actual RAM in the system that you'll be getting with well that type of platform. If you need more VRAM chances are you probably also to need a stronger video card core which means going up to that better video card core will also to give you more amount of RAM. Now with that being said there is your kind of vocational limited edition that will come out with double the RAM or even triple the RAM but they're fairly rare and not going to come out every single day. For 2015 gaming in sort of your general type of games 2 to 4 gigabytes of RAM will do just fine for 1080p and 4 to 8 gigabytes should be fine for 4k. Obviously as time goes on and games get better and different specifications become a requirement that 2 gigabyte and 4 gigabyte will definitely change over time but really comes down to what core you have as opposed to how much VRAM as you have because well the cores might not be able to take advantage of that much RAM. So I guess that wraps up this video. Don't really worry about the amount of RAM, more worry about the actual GPU that's connected up to that RAM and you should end up with a fairly decent experience. Guys, like or dislike the video accordingly, let me know what amount of RAM you have in your particular system. Also too, give us a sub if you like what we're doing and want to stay tuned for more videos and I'll see you all next time for another video.